Now we're going to explain the differences between measures and calculated columns. Now, first of all, measures. Okay. Now, the name measures is seen in Excel 2010. Now, in Excel 2013, it changed to calculated fields. But in Excel 2016, it went back to measures and it's there now. So we're going to talk about measures as being that, not calculated fields. Now, these are the DAX formulas that you add into a pivot table. So they're only available inside a pivot table. You can only use them in the values area of the pivot table as well. So you cannot put them into the row, column or report filter. They have to be in the values area for them to work. Now you will use measures when you want to aggregate calculations. Now you will use measures when you want to create aggregated calculations. For example, sum, average, or the average sales price across all your transactions. Now, the measure will only calculate when a pivot table changes. So if you're using slices or you're filtering, you're refreshing or rearranging the pivot table, then that's when the measure will be calculated and changed. So it's, it's very powerful. As you're making changes, the value changes, and that is super, super helpful. Now, a couple of measures that you can calculate. You can do the average sales per day. You can do the sales versus the budget percentage and the change versus the prior year. Just a few of them there. There's a lot more measures you can do. It's very powerful. Now, with calculated columns, you can only do them inside the Power Pivot grid. And these are DAX formulas that you add to each transaction on row. So say you have thousands of rows of data and then you have a column there and you want to calculate or do a calculation just for each row of data. That's when you will use a calculated column. You can only use the calculated columns in rows, in columns, report filter and slices in the pivot table. And also you can use them in the values area. Okay. The calculations are made on each row, as I said. So for example, if you had a column that had all the dates there, and then in your new column, you want to do a calculated column and you want to say, return me the week num. So the week number, for example, for the first of the first 2000. So you put in that week num equals and you reference the cell and then you press enter and then it gives you the week numbers for every transaction, not just for the cell that you're in or the row that you're in there. It gives you for all the transactions and it's a great way where you can get values for a transactional basis. Now, these calculations are pre-calculated and they are stored as part of the file. So once you do the calculation, it stamps the value and it stores it as part of the file. So that means that, you know, your file size may increase, especially if you have lots of transactional values there or rows. Now, the answers, they never change when the pivot table changes. So if you put your calculated column inside a pivot table, and then you have some slices there and you choose different dates, for example, 2010 or 2011, 2012, the values will not change. The calculated column will not change because they are stamped in there. So they're not very useful inside a pivot table. Now, another thing is the answers in the calculated column that you have inside the power pivot grid, they will only change when the data source gets updated. So say your data source is connected to an outside source and every day there's new data that comes in or gets refreshed. That's when the values will get changed. Also, the calculated columns can calculate the following. So if you want to group data, then you will use a calculated column. And if you want to find out what is your net margin or your net profit of each transaction, that's when you use a calculated column. You do your calculations there and it gives you the net margin of profit of each row of data. So two different scenarios, measures, calculated columns. It depends on what your result is and what you want to use and what values you want to get out of your data. So either one is good, but for mine, measures 
uh, more powerful because as your pivot table changes, then that measure changes. And that is a very powerful analysis tool to have.